I can't believe this is actually working. And it's actually, this is actually the same thing that happens when you dial up a BBS. They negotiate, they connect, and they transfer data. So you type and the BBS responds. You see, I just type. And the data is transferred through the wire to the other modem and then into the C64. Beautiful, huh? Just use least landline mode or something. Check in, check the internet and put the dip switches in the right position of this, these kind of modems and they will connect automatically. Now, this is Raspberry Pi with an, uh, different ports here. You have composite, you have uh, HDMI, you have audio, network, USB and uh, of course SD card. The SD card is the hard drive for this small computer and we're going to install a version of my favorite OS, the Debian. But this version is called Raspbian. And uh, it's going to be great. This computer has uh, half a gig of memory and it's uh, fast enough to do the things that we need to be doing here. We are going to translate the serial port data to the telnet so we can access all these BBSs that is hiding there on the telnet protocol back out there on the dark web of course and that USB cable just goes to the serial port USB to serial port converter there and you, we put in the Ethernet of course to the routers we can get online and uh, we need uh, of course we need the power the same thing as your mobile phone actually same charger and uh, something's happening here so I think I have to delete or I mean the format the SD card before we do the new installation there it's trying to load something Now, this is the most beautiful thing you ever gonna see on this channel. I made this when I was, I think, eight or 10 years old. It's a serial port for the C64 with hot glue and one chip and a lot of cables. It just translates the signals from the C64 to the serial port through this Max 2, 3, 2, I think it's called, this chip here. So we can have a serial data flow from, for example, a PC or modem to the C64. It's pretty ugly, but it does the job. And a quick comparison between the Raspberry Pi 1 and Raspberry Pi 2. The 2 is on top there. And I probably gonna make a Raspberry Pi number three if I don't, you know, keep them in check here. Um, Raspberry Pi two has um, micro SD, four USB ports, no composite out, and uh, that's about it. Faster CPU and one gig of RAM. It's a more powerful machine. This is a serial port uh, converter, a USB to serial port. And it goes there to the C64 side. And then we take this extension, plug into the Raspberry Pi. And of course we can use the modem setup that I did in the beginning here. That's gonna work too. So we have it real retro style and real kind of a green setup with two modems and all this shit just to surf the BBS. Holy crap. TP link here. I, I can go wireless also, go Wi-Fi. If I put this in here and we will have Wi-Fi. So we don't need the ethernet cable. Okie dokie, so we need to download the um, image to uh, install on the SD card. And I'm on the Raspberry Pi website. 
So a lot of nice pictures here and uh, tutorials and guides and everything. I highly recommend it. We're going to use uh, Raspbian, which is uh, like Debian, but for Raspberry Pi. And uh, you can see you have two options here. The Raspberry, no, Raspbian Stretch with uh, the desktop version there and uh, the light version. Now, I'm going to use the light version because I'm pretty familiar with um, Linux. And down it goes. Okay, so the Raspberry is on its way up. It's gonna load everything it needs to the random access memory, the RAM, and then start to execute the services that uh, kind of make up the operating system. And this happens in uh, all operating systems when they boot, in uh, iOS or Windows, it doesn't matter. You just don't see it like this. So it's not scary. It's actually kind of easy and simple if you see it like this. The different components that make up the operating system is all coming to life here in the boot of this Raspbian on this uh, Raspberry Pi version 2. It's fixing a swap file for the first time. And then we will be greeted with a prompt to log in. And I think it's uh, Raspberry, and then the password is Pi, or it's Pi and the password is Raspberry. I think it's the opposite because I always do things wrong. So if I just change my mind, everything will be okay. Just look at this, Pi and then Raspberry. And we are going to check internet here. Do we have an IP address? No. First I have to expand the file system. I'm sorry. I'm going to expand the file system so that it um, kind of takes advantage of the whole area of the SD card and not just a small area that was created when we kind of burned the image to the SD card. It's somewhere here. I think it's under advanced options, if I remember correctly. Yeah, expand file system and it ensures that all of the SD card is um, used as a hard drive. And a reboot. So we are back again. And you can see there's a lot of cool. Um, things to do here you can even overclock this small computer overclock the raspberry yeah try to do that and then run your favorite game who knows okay so we have internet uh, I just have to change the name service and I also I want this to have a fixed IP address instead of this uh, router provided one if I can remember how I did that. I'm just gonna check in if I can ping my router. It's no problem. And I should be able to ping Google DNS by just using the IP. So the internet works like this. You enter an address in your browser and the browser will ask the name server for the IP of that address. Okay, and then the connection is made. Now, Nano is a good editor, provided in almost all... What the f*** is this? IPv6 here? We're a retro channel, goddammit. IPv6, come on. Anyway, so... Uh, Nano is a good uh, editor, provided with almost all distributions of uh, Linux today. Okay, so we restart the net network here. And we have changed our DNS servers. And uh, we need to enter the, what the file was called DHSP, oh, no, DHCPCD.conf. 
so this is where you can go in and it's pretty easy you can go the other way too there's, an, there's another way to do this but this is just you know you uncomment this and uh, you enter the IP address that you want so I'm gonna put this in my net here and then we should be ready to go we need to download the TCP to serial app that we need because we we are going to use the serial port here and connect it to the C64 and then um, the this app will uh, translate it to Telnet. Now look, we can ping Expressen. That's a Swedish newspaper. Definitely fake news. No, I'm just joking. They're not fake news. Okay, so we install this by running this command. The TCP sir here is the app that we need. And it's connecting to the Raspberry distribution download area site here and uh, we should be able to um, just run it and uh, enter a couple of parameters and flags and it should be just fine and dandy so uh, let's run it like TCP I'm checking here cheating a bit but you can just copy this command and it should be fine TCP sir and then S and that's the speed should be 9900 that's the speed of the serial connection and then we need to map it to the device on the Raspberry Pi and this is the same C64 that we fixed in a previous episode and I think we fixed the 1541 as well the floppy drive there and this is a cool floppy that I prepared internet cool and lots of arrows so we can um, surf the BB I mean the dark web and um, here again cool floppy very retro goes into the disk drive here and uh, I'm gonna cut over to um, capture card here because um, this is not fun to watch so we load the terminal software I have another device connected now that um, emulates a floppy disk drive but it loads from a SD card instead it's more convenient it's a better way to transfer data from a PC to the C64 loading the terminal software here so we can uh, start our adventures as you can see the C64 is a bit slow loading all the kilobytes into the RAM and uh, now we can run them and hopefully we end up with a um, nice terminal okie doke what should we do we can test the uh, communication here I guess we should be able to connect to uh, BBS on Telnet here this is the settings here board rate and duplex and all these nice things I'm trying to type here but uh, ah, there we go AT I should get an answer from the from the modem here the modem I mean the Raspberry Pi but nothing happened so maybe we are out of luck we have to I can try to dial up uh, BBS here and this is actually ATD like uh, dial 
and usually it should be a phone number and it's actually connect uh, 1200 board and we are connected to um, BBS here because this press Dell thing oh here it comes what is this oh it's nice graphics welcome to score sport this it's run on a C64 emulator, so they're cheating a bit. Anyway. A new user here. What should we call ourselves? Something cool. Like UTU, maybe? Checking the membership file. Wow, rainbow. But imagine, back in the 80s, this was really the coolest shit you could probably see. Rainbow, ASCII. Whoa. Sorry, uh, okay. Okay, and they just kicked me out. No carrier, you see, disconnected. Assholes. So I just connected to Borderline BBS. I heard it's really good. I created an account there. And um, I just logged in, so it's searching for mail here. No new mails, okay. Why not? Read the graffiti wall. No. No. Okay, this is the menu. Dear did not work. Okay. Quit. What did I do? While any file is being displayed on this PBS, you can use P. What? I don't know what I'm doing here, guys. Retro family. I'm failing you. But it's okay. I'm gonna kind of dig myself out of this hole. I think I'm back in again. I think we hacked them. I'm gonna hack this BBS. I'm gonna close it down. There can be only one BBS. My BBS. I'm gonna make my own BBS. Leave feedback. No. No. I think I have to reconnect. Go ahead and make. What the hell? Everybody's pointing a gun at me on the dark web these goddamn BBSs, everybody's trying to kill me. Imagine if Google were like this. You enter Google and they say, go ahead, make my day, asshole. And they try to shoot you and, uh, I mean, threaten you and, and, and Bill Gates, like, go ape shit on your ass. This was the 80s and I love it. Okay. Yes. Look at this nice ASCII art here. Another gun. Crazy about guns, these guys. Abandon all hope. Okay. Thank you, asshole. My phone number is, uh, let's see, I just put some numbers here. This is my phone number, I promise, yes. Stand by. Okay, standing by. Password. Not gonna show you. Look, one hour. You have one hour. Or something. Yeah, that's right. You just had a limited time because um, it was too crowded, and the, the sysop just had a couple of modems connected to this. Let's say ten, and if ten were occupied, it would be occupied for a long time. So they had to kick people out. So the one modem was free and uh, another guy could log in. Let's see what's on this BBS. Nothing new. Trying to understand these menus. Bulletins. Please select which bulletin number you would like to go from. Okay, this is a forum. This is the, like the <laughs> Reddit of the 80s. We go here and read and post things. Uh, 
I'm in BBS News now, so it's loading again. I think this BBS is actually running from real drives and a real hardware, a C64 or 128 or something. Sure, I get this. BBS News 6. Current port bulletins. If I pr press read and one, okay. Cottonwood BBS posted by Mad Max. Yay, just call it a few minutes ago, Mad Max, okay, wow, cool guy. Private to ban, if I want to talk to him, no, word wrapping color on, no, you can send 10 more messages, I didn't send anything, I guess. Max 50 lines, 248 characters per line, hit return on a blank line to exit, Press Ctrl U for uppercase, graphics, Ctrl N, returns to normal, press Ctrl Y to toggle rainbow or rainbow mode. Check this out. Hell yeah. I'm gonna text him. Hell yeah, brother. This is too much fun for me, actually. Isn't this cool? We did this ourselves. We uh, programmed the whole thing, installed the operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Everything. Even tried to connect two modems together and it worked. my hell yeah brother so it's saved saved up in the dark web I'm not um, bot this would probably be a good place to spread fake news because I'm sure these guys would believe everything that's on this one, these uh, forums here. Because it's so rare with uh, visitors. Look, here's the cost of running a BBS by Joe Wilson. Holy s shit! 10,000, 10 grand for hardware, okay. Okay. So I guess I go with number five. That's uh, thoughts of an old sysop. What is this? The dog's bark rang like a shot in my ear. I sat up in the bed and I looked at the clock. 3 a.m. Stupid dog. Probably just a cat. But one thing was for sure, I would not get back to sleep anytime soon, so off to the computer room to see what was going on. I entered the dark room and I didn't turn on the desk light so the light would not shine down the hall and wake up my old wife. I gazed at the modem to see that its little red lights were alive with activity. Someone was on. Without turning on the monitor, I sat on the couch opposite the computers. All was dark except for the little lights of the modem computers and the drive access lights on the LKS. The fans gently purred and I did not have the heart or desire to disturb or intrude upon the activities of the user. I watched the silent activity only to realize that there was another presence in the room. I was not alone. Someone somewhere was sitting behind a keyboard in the middle of the night hammering at the keys and enjoying what our system was doing. It was a good feeling of presence, no text on the screen but just a feeling. I severed no the notion as I watched the lights of their job and realized that the small gentle wings of lights and quiet whir of the drives was not a mechanical activity 
but the actions of a living, breathing intelligence. On its own, the computer system was nothing but with the inputs of hundreds of hundreds of real people, on the BBS the components were alive. Take them away and we would lose contact with dozens of friends far away who we have never met but cared so much about. So much heavy thinking made me sleepy so as I stood to return to bed I patted the side of the little C64 keyboard and wished it well. Keep up the good work and tell all my friends I said hello. Now I could go back to sleep. Dr. Shade. Now this is what this channel is about. Guys like this one, Dr. Shade, who built the internet I would say. The humble beginnings of the internet as we know it started with the BBSs and the dedication of this Sysop and his friends made uh, a miracle happen. And uh, you should celebrate the past, you should uh, learn everything you can about retro computing if you work with computers. You should know the beginning. By knowing the beginning you can actually predict the future. Now let's try to send an email to myself here. This is actually email guys from the 80s. You could email on the BBSs. Let's email you to you. Oh, it's smart. Come on, it said. Stop fooling around. You can't email yourself. So I guess We go with games, maybe. There are a lot of games here. Level too low. Balsabar is out. Help. Yeah, you know, you have to practice a bit. Abort system. We'll disconnect. Oh, oh 